The Federal Circuit's first post-Bilski decision may come in the case of Mayo v. Prometheus Labs. That case had been pending on a petition for a writ of certiorari to the Supreme Court. In a June 29, 2010 order, the court granted the petition and then summarily vacated the decision with a remand to the Federal Circuit to reconsider the case in light of Bilski v. Kapos. The Supreme Court regularly uses this grant, vacate, remand, or GVR proceeding to, for pending cases that are impacted by a decision. In this case, the Mayo Clinic challenges the validity of two Prometheus patents based upon suspect patentable subject matter. The Prometheus patent claims go to an iterative approach to dosing that involves three steps. The first step is to administer a drug to a subject then determine the level of the drug in the subject, and finally decide whether the next dose should be the same, higher, or lower. The decision on the next dose is made by comparing the level of the drug in the subject against predetermined thresholds. This Claim 1 of one of the Prometheus patents adds additional detail including identifying the active ingredient 6-thioguanine, the diagnosis a gastrointestinal disorder, and the predetermined thresholds, for example, 230 p-mole of drug per 8108 red blood cells. The Federal Circuit held the method patentable under its Bilski test by finding that the required administration of the drug transformed an article into a different state or thing, essentially creating a per se rule that a method requiring administration of a drug will be deemed patentable subject matter under Section 101. The court also held that the predetermined level step was necessarily transformative since those levels cannot be determined by mere inspection. On remand, the focus will shift from the machine or transformation test to the broader question of whether the claims are directed to a statutory process and or whether the claim scope is impermissibly abstract. Of course, the machine or transformation test may still be instructive in answering the question. Question of the impact of the Bilski case on green technologies. Green technologies embrace a diverse range of products, services, and processes that enable clean or alternative energy production and or conservation by providing superior long-term performance and efficiency. As for green technologies, it's interesting to note that the Bilski method is in fact an energy technology method. The potential impact of Bilski can be illustrated by considering innovations in the smart grid area. The press is replete with examples of methods that can be used to manage electrical supply, usage, and pricing in a manner that will reduce peak electric load, the critical management parameter for our electric power infrastructure. These methods range from highly complex algorithms that take into account a large number of factors to simple yet clever tricks. Some of them involve specific machines and can be argued to otherwise satisfy the machine or transformation test. Others likely would not. It may well be that the mixture of approaches will be needed to reduce peak demands to a point that will allow solar and wind generation to displace investments in larger generation plants that run constantly even though they are only needed during periods of extremely high demand. These and other inventions that have to do with processes and business methods are now protectable by Bilski so long as they do not violate the abstract idea of prohibition on patentable subject matter. In addition to having implications across industry sectors within the United States, there are implications of the Bilski decision for international patent applicants as well. The Bilski decision also may have implications for international software patents. In Europe, software patents, particularly business method patents, are more difficult to obtain than has been the case in the United States. The European Patent Convention excludes computer programs as such from patentability, but does not define what this means. Case law in the European Patent Office has provided a definition which allows patent claims on what they call program products. Patents with such claims are sometimes regarded as software patents. There are definite limits to such claims. To be patentable, an invention must have technical character. This means the invention must use technical features and solve a technical problem. 
A computer program has a technical character if it causes a technical effect when run on a computer. This effect must be more than the normal physical interaction between program and computer. The program is then more than a program as such. In practice, this requirement is usually not a problem for inventions that use software for their realization. So it should not come as a surprise that there are many European patents covering software-related inventions. Yet, in light of the Bilski case, the prohibition of obtaining patents on abstract ideas in the United States and the emphasis on this prohibition that the Bilski case brings to bear arguably causes the U.S. patent law to now be more consistent with the European patent law of requiring that there be a technical effect or technical character in the substance of the claims that an applicant in both the United States and in Europe may seek to obtain. The Bilski decision is further considered to have a ramification for issued patents as well as pending patent applications. Let's look at those at this time. The Bilski decision relates to both issued patents and pending patent applications. As for issued patents, the Bilski Federal Circuit decision concerns as to machine or transformation tests and now abstract ideas are still effective for many patents. Accordingly, a review of issued patents is now called for. It may be that reissue of previously issued patents should be appropriate. However, this can only be determined on a case-by-case -case basis. In light of the Bilski Supreme Court decision, it is important to consider avoiding and resolving problems with pending patent applications. The U.S. Patent and Trademark Office will employ the machine or transformation test as a guide, and since the Bilski decision has issued guidance respecting the use of this test, the United States Patent and Trademark Office has prepared further guidance for the Patent Examining Corps to use in determining subject matter eligibility in view of the Bilski v. Kappa's decision. The guidance provides additional factors to aid in determining whether a claimed method is an abstract idea. Applicants with pending applications would be wise to review these guidelines, and we provide a review of this guidance in this presentation. There are also patent value considerations arising in the Bilski v. Kappa's decision. Let's now consider how valuations of patents may vary as a result of the Bilski decision. The Bilski decision may also affect the value of patents. Prior to the U.S. Supreme Court decision, it was generally held that the Bilski Federal Circuit decision could threaten thousands of biotech and software patents that have been approved over several decades. The issued patents may not satisfy the machine or transformation test. There was a chance that the patent applications could be invalid. Yet, in light of the U.S. Supreme Court decision, although the machine or transformation test is not the exclusive test, the abstract idea prohibition for both biotech patent claims and business method patent claims should be considered. Many of these patents may yet be attacked, not just business method or biotech patents, but the other classes of patents that we've discussed so far. Thus, even though the machine or transformation test has been deemed by the Supreme Court to not be the exclusive test for patentability, there is the concern that both the machine or transformation test and the prohibition of obtaining patents on abstract ideas be attended to in reviewing the value of patents as these previously issued patents may not satisfy either or both of these tests. A cost comparison often helps in determining the value of a patent. This is provided by calculus that compares the potential value of a patent times the probability of really realizing that value against the cost of obtaining the patent in the first place. This slide shows various factors that go into the determination of the potential value of a patent, including exclusive rights, enforcement, against infringers, cross-licensing opportunities, grant-back licensing, and such. Factors affecting the probability of realizing such value are current customer demand, customer receptiveness to new technology, the availability of commercially acceptable alternatives, and other factors affecting the likelihood of realizing the value that a patent provides. 
Against this is compared the cost of obtaining the patent, including the cost to secure the patent from the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office and other patent offices around the world, the cost to enforce the patent in the event that the patent is infringed, and the cost to maintain and explore the patent via license agreements and other transactions. In looking at the effect of the Bilski decision, certain factors come into consideration. They include the exclusive rights, the enforcement against infringers, improved bargaining posture, the use of patent pending label, the effect of competitive design, and strong technological appearance for shareholders. If patents to business methods and patents have been issued or applications are being sought by a company or an inventor, the value of these factors may be diminished as a function of the Bilski analysis and decision. Moreover, as to the probability of realizing the value as a result of the focus on the limitation against abstract ideas and the effect of the machine or transformation test, one needs to consider the scope of protection that the patent instrument may provide. As to the cost of the patent, these may not change, but if the other factors are put into question, such considerations may affect the cost to enforce the patent and may have effects on the ability or the likelihood of maintaining and the ability to explore or license the patent.